So are you still looking for a project to help clean up some of those scraps you have in your stash? This hot pad was made entirely out of scraps. It's a wonderful gift. Do you have a friend with a birthday who's coming up? Can you imagine this with some Christmas prints or some fall prints? This is super easy to do. And so without delay, let's get started right away and I'll show you how to make it. First thing I need to do is press these scraps so that I can work with them, so that they're not all wrinkled. Wrinkled fabric is hard to get a good straight cut on. Everything is all pressed. Um, just to show you, this really was a piece of scrap. This is just a little piece that I'll cut off the end here. I'm really sad to see this piece be used up. This was one of my favorite, favorite fabrics that I've had in a long time. It's just the colors I love. So, um, need to decide uh, how big I want my hot pad to be. And the maximum size that I can make um, would be a 10 inch square, because this here is uh, 10 inches. But I'm going to trim it down just a little bit to get my design completely square, because there are vertical and horizontal lines in it, and I want it to line up. So once I squared the pattern up with the fabric, discovered the largest square I could make was a nine by nine square, and that's just perfect. To do a pinwheel, a super easy way, you just work with a square. So this is a piece of um, white fabric. I'm gonna put my right sides together, and now I'm gonna cut it the exact same size as this piece of fabric that I wanna use, and making sure that everything on it is still nice and straight. Just that simple. We have our square. The next thing I'm going to do with my right sides together, and of course there's really no right side with your white, um, I'm going to sew around all four edges. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. And you can use any seam allowance that you want. So a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So I have sewn all around all four edges and I just ran off the edge and then started back and went down this way. Did all four edges. I used a 3 8 inch seam just because. And so now the magic happens. Take your ruler and you're going to cut right in the intersection of all your lines. So I'm going to go from diagonal to diagonal, just lining up exactly from corner to corner without moving it. Just like that. I'm going to fold these out and press them to the dark side. And what that means is I'm just going to push the fabric over to the darkest fabric. And the reason you do that is um, it would show through the lighter fabric. So there's one. Take it and just slide your iron across. There's two. Try not to do any stretching anywhere. There's three and four. We need to find our pinwheel. So this way, this way, this way, and then this way. Nope. See how tricky it is? This way. So you lay it out so that you have your pinwheel. You put these two sides together and you sew down this side. Straight down like that. Then you're going to put these two sides together, lining them up, and sew down this side. And then we'll sew the two of them together. I'll show you. So I matched up my sides and I just again used a 3 8 inch seam. And the only reason I'm able to do that is I'm keeping it consistent and I'm only making one square. So 
It doesn't have to be consistent over a number of squares, just this one square. And so I sewed it and now I'm going to press this one flat. And I'm just trimming off, these are called little dog ears, I'm going to trim those off even. You just get rid of some of that um, extra fabric which is called bulk when you're sewing. You want to get rid of as much of that bulkiness as you can. All right, so I'm going to press these flat and then sew them together. So my two pieces are completely pressed. You can see how nice it looks on the back. This one's pressed and so keeping my pinwheel going correctly, you got to double check. <laughs> All right, I am going to put these two together and because we press the same way to the dark each time, these this center seam here where there's the most um, seams that are all lined up, this one goes this way and this one goes this way. It's just perfect. So I'm going to take this and sew straight across and I'll be right back. So you can see I got a really nice little point here in the middle and um, when I was starting out sewing, I made sure that was lined up. So now I need to press these seams one way or the other. You're not going to be able to press to the dark side on both sides. So just pick one side or the other to do this center seam. Seems to want to go this way. That's the way I'm going to press. Okay, so here's our square. I'm going to trim off exactly the same as this edge, these little dog ears that go all the way around. The next thing we're going to do is take our piece of backing fabric and just double check. Yeah, we still have lots of room around the edge. So there's that. We're going to take our piece of batting that we have, trim it up. Well, you have a lot of options. You could tie it instead of uh, quilting it. You could quilt it with uh, free motion quilting, which would be adorable. Uh, we're going to do it with straight lines just because it's easier for a beginner. So because we're going to quilt this, you have to attach it somehow. I'm going to use my 505, uh, 505 temporary fabric adhesive. This stuff really does have a smell to it. So if you're going to use a lot of it, you should be using it um, with a window open. So just a little squirt and put my square on. And just that easy, it's all put together. Now, if you don't want to go buy this, then you need to um, use like safety pins or something, some regular pins to hold this quilt sandwich together while you work on it. So I'm going to bring my machine in and I'm just going to do a little stitch about a quarter inch from each of the seams all the way around and I'll be right back. Okay, I did my top stitching and as you can see I just did straight stitches. The um, key to doing um, straight stitch quilting is to be sure that your lines go really straight which makes sense. Um, I had to use my older white sewing machine. My um, princess sewing machine I think needs a day at the spa, uh, which reminds me to remind you that about once a year or depending on how much you sew, it really is a good idea to take your machines in and let them be serviced. Um, they just get a little wonky and um, some more than others, and it it's expensive, I know it is, but it really does make a difference in your sewing. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my <laughs> rotary cutter and I'm going to square this up one last time. I had this little scrap of fabric when I squared it up, and I'm going to just sew, sew it together and make a... Uh, hanging tab. So have you ever sewed a little tube like this and you wonder how am I going to turn that right side out? 
Well, here's a trick. Take a safety pin and put it down just a little ways here in the back, on the back of your fabric. You don't want it super close to the edge because you're going to be pulling on it and you don't want it to just pull out. All right, so then take it and face the end of your safety pin down inside the tube and just wiggle it like you would when you're putting um, a casing. So just like that. And it's attached to the back. So it's gonna just turn it right side out. So now I have my tube turned right side out. I'm gonna press it and I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. I'm gonna show you a cheater way, that's what I call it. It's I use it quite a bit uh, to do a binding. There are fancier ways and I'll show you one of those sometime, but for today we're just gonna use our, um, our simple way. So this piece here, was two and a half inches, it was in my stash. It's the full width of the fabric and I double checked to make sure it would go around and it is big enough. So I cut the end off square, folded one end to the side over here, then you fold it back up and you've made a little pocket. So we're gonna lay it on our, our piece and we're gonna give it a, oh, two inches here, leaving it open and start sewing right here. So here's what it looks like on my piece. Here is the opening. I'm gonna start sewing here. And I've also marked a quarter inch from the bottom and put a pin right there. Or you could use something to mark it, but a pin actually shows up better because it sticks out past the edge. So now I'm gonna start sewing at my first pin and sew straight down and stop right there. And I'm gonna use uh, a quarter inch seam. Okay, so I've left my opening, I've sewed down like this. I left my quarter inch down here at the bottom. So now I'm gonna take this piece, and you don't have to be this precise, but I'll show you what we're talking about. Um, I'll line this up. You take this piece and you run it straight out parallel with the bottom. So you see how that's parallel? And to help you out, you could put a pin in that if you want to. And on this particular design, it matches exactly on the pinwheel part right there. Then you take this and you flip it back this way and you line it up exactly on the edge right here. See how that fold is right there. You can see how this is folded back and this is folded up exactly on the edge right there. Now we're going to turn this around. This pin is out of the way and we're going to start sewing a quarter of an inch from the end, which means that folded parts over here and not getting sewed. So start a quarter inch there and do the exact same thing on all three remaining corners. Okay, so I'm ready to do the magic with this binding here. So here's that little pocket we left right here. I cut the binding so it's just shorter than where we started sewing. I'm gonna open this up and place it inside Tuck it up so it's nice and neat, right from the fold into the fold right there. Make it nice and flat. Just like that, you've successfully put a nice finishing touch on your binding. To finish it up, you do just like you did before, and you sew down this side catching this little opening so it's nice and closed and finish sewing all the way down. Okay, so here we are with our binding sewn all the way around. So I bet you can guess what our next step is. We are going to take this and turn it to the back and we're gonna turn our fold to right, right below the sewing line, the stitching line here in the back. We'll cover that line completely up and sew it in by hand. And I use a double thread on a regular needle, regular thread, and uh, just use a blind stitch all the way around. I wanted to show you what I meant by a blind stitch. 
So you're taking and putting your needle in between the batting and your fabric. You're not going through to the front. It's not going to show at all. And you slide it down and you take the tiniest little teeny nick of the fabric right there and pull. All right, and then you just go keep going. So you go back in right where you came out into the batting right there. Take another little nick of the fabric. Back in at the same spot and a nick out. And you'll just do this all the way around and you're going to have a nice little hem on your binding. I'm going to put it in the corner with, with it about a half an inch from the end on this side and a half an inch from the end on this side. Matching up my raw edges of the tie and the um, pot holder. Okay, so I sewed this side here and then put the binding over it. I'm showing you here how I did it. I sewed a little on this side of the, the loop and a little on this side, and I did a couple stitches in between, only going through uh, this part, not clear to the front. Now I'm tying it off. All right. And when I push it up, it's going to have a loop that looks like this. And that's what I was looking for. Just a nice little little loop like that. So now I'm going to finish putting my binding on down the side this way. Here is the scrappy little pot holder that turned out to be ten inches square with just some scraps that you have in your scrap bin, you can have this. So until next time, this was Cindy from Vintage to New.